Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be learning how to scrape websites using the Beautiful Soup library. Now, if you don't know what it means to scrape websites, basically this means parsing the content from a website and pulling out exactly the information that you want. So for example, maybe you wanna pull down some headlines from a news site or grab some scores from a sports website or monitor the prices of some items in an online store or something like that. Now to show an example of this, let's take a look at the finished product that we'll be building in this video, and then we will learn how to build it. So I'm here on my personal website, and on my homepage here, I have a lot of different posts of my most recent videos, and every post that I have has a title here that is a big heading tag, and then I have a text summary of the video here, and then I have a link to the video. So let's say that we wanted to write a scraper that would go out and scrape all of this information. So I wanted to grab all of the post titles and summaries and links to the videos uh, from my homepage, and I wanted to ignore all this other information. So to do this, I have a finished version of what we'll be building in this video, and then we'll learn how to build it. So right now I can just run this with Python, and this is called cmsscrape.py. So if I run this, then this went out and scraped all of the titles and summaries and links. So we can see here we have a title. So this is my CSV module video. And then we have the summary text here. And then we have the link text here. Now, not only did this go out and scrape this information from the website and print it out here in the terminal, but it also created a CSV of all this information as well. So if I open up this uh, CMS scrape dot CSV. This should open it up in numbers, but you could also open it up in Excel. Now this isn't very readable right now, but if I make these columns a little bit smaller here and then wrap this text, then we should be able to read this. So you can see we have a column that has all of our headlines for all the articles on that homepage and then all the text summaries and then a link to each video. So that is what web scraping is. It goes out and it pulls down all of the information that you want from a specific website. So now I am going to clear those out and pull these back up. Now, if you're trying to parse out that information with something that you had built in Python yourself, then you'd probably run into a lot of issues. But luckily, there's the beautiful soup library that makes parsing out all this information a lot easier to do. Now, we'll also be using the request library in this video to make our web request. Now, you could use the built-in URL lib module, but the request library is extremely popular for fetching websites, so we're going to go ahead and use that. So let's go ahead and get started and see how to do this. So first of all, let's make sure that we have everything installed that we need. So to install beautiful soup, you can just use the pip install command. So to do this, we can just say pip install, and this is beautiful soup, and this is beautiful soup four. So you can see that I already had that installed, but if you don't have that installed, then you should just go through the installation at that point. Now you definitely want to install Beautiful Soup 4 because there is an older version just called Beautiful Soup, but Beautiful Soup 4 will give you one that's most up to date. So once that's installed, then we need to make sure that we have a parser to parse our HTML. Now I won't go deep into the details of these parsers, but there are some small differences between the parsers and they could return different results depending on the HTML that you're trying to parse. Now, if you're trying to parse perfectly formed HTML, then those differences aren't going to matter. But if there are mistakes in the HTML, then the different parsers will try to fill in missing information differently. So Beautiful Soup has a section in their documentation about the differences between those parsers. And basically they suggest installing and using the LXML parser. So that's what we're going to use in this video. Now they also say that the HTML5 lib parser uses techniques that are part of the HTML5 standard. So you could use that one too. But most of the time, uh, the choice between the parsers isn't really going to matter all that much as long as you're working with good HTML. But I'll go ahead and leave a link to the differences between those parsers in the description section below if you want to read more about those. So to make sure that we have the LXML parser installed, we can install it uh, with pip also. So we could just say pip install and that is lxml so if we run that then i already have that installed but yours will install there if you don't already have that now if you want the html5 lib parser then you can just do a pip install html5 lib so like i said we'll be using lxml in this video but the html5 lib is popular as well uh, so now we also need the request library and just the same we can do a pip install 
uh, request and run that. And you can see that mine's already installed, but if you don't have it, then yours should get pulled down right there. Okay, so now that we have those installed, let me clear that out. And now let's take a look at what we can use these for. Now you don't have to be extremely familiar with HTML in order to scrape websites, but it definitely helps to know. So basically HTML is structured in a way where all of the information is contained within certain tags. And if you're at all familiar with XML, then it's very similar to that. Now I have a very uh, extremely basic HTML file open here in my browser. So we can see that this small example just has one big hit header here that says test website. And then we have two large links here for articles. And one is the article one headline. And then it has a small text summary here below that. And then we have a big article two headline here with a text summary below that. And then we have a footer down here at the bottom. Now this is how browsers display HTML. We are using the Chrome browser right now, but in the background, the source code looks a bit different. So I have the source code for this very basic website pulled up, uh, pulled up over here on the right side of my screen. So let me make this a little smaller here, and then I will stretch this over so that we can better see the source code. So we can see how this is structured. So we have these tags throughout our document and there are opening tags that are surrounded by these angle brackets here. Uh, so we have this head tag that opens the tag and they also have uh, closing brackets down here, which are the same, except they have a forward slash after the first angle bracket. Uh, so the close of our head tag will be this line here and everything, all this content is within this head tag. So all this here is a single head tag and all of these tags can be nested. So if we wanna find our article headline and article summaries, then we can look down here in our body tag. So we have an opening body tag here and within the body, we have our um, you know, test website H1 here, which is a heading. And then we have a div tag here, which has a class of article. And within this div, we have our H2 tag and the H2 is another heading, a subheading. And within that H2, we have a link, these A tags, which are anchor tags, these are links. So this is the text to the link here, article one headline. That's what gets displayed over here in the actual website. We can see article one headline. And this href, this is actually where this uh, links to. So this links to a page article one.html. Now these classes here, how this has a class of article, uh, these are mainly used for CSS styling and can also be used within JavaScript to identify specific elements. Now below that heading tag that we looked at, then we just have a paragraph tag here, which is just a P, and this is the text summary of that article. So we can see here that this, is, this entire div with the class of article has our H2 heading and then our paragraph for the summary. And then this is just repeated down here. So for our second article, we have another div with the class article and then another H2, but this one is for the article two head, headline and the article two link, and then the summary text for article two. And then lastly, we have a footer down here at the bottom that is just a div with the class of footer. And that has a paragraph tag within there uh, with some text. So everything else in here is just extra information. So we have some scripts and up here at the top, we have some style sheets and things like that. Uh, but all of this in the body is what gets displayed over here in the website. So let's use this very simple example to see how we can parse out information using beautiful soup. So I'm going to open up a file here called scrape.py. Now all we have in here so far are our imports for beautiful soup and request. So we have from BS4 import beautiful soup, and then we're also importing requests. So let's say that we wanted to parse out the article headlines and the summaries from our very simple website over here. So in this example, it's just article one, and its summary text, and then article two headline and its summary text. So first things first, let's pass our HTML into beautiful soup so that we can get a beautiful soup object. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. We can either pass in the HTML as a string, which is what we'll do in a minute when we parse our website from the internet, but we can also pass in an HTML file. And in our case, we have this sample HTML file within our current directory. So let's go ahead and just open up this file and pass it in to beautiful soup. So to open up this file, we can just say with open and this uh, HTML file is called simple.html and it's within the same directory of our script. Uh, so we don't have to specify a path and then we're just going to read that in. So read is the default, so we don't have to do anything there. And I'll just say as HTML 
file, and then the pass that HTML file into Beautiful Soup, we can just say soup equals Beautiful Soup, and then we will pass in that HTML file. And now we need to specify our parser. And like I said, for this video, we are going to use the LXML parser. Now, if working with files is new to you and you want to know more about this, uh, like with open statement and things like that, then I do have a video specifically on working with file objects. And I'll leave a link to that in the description section below. Okay, so now we have this soup variable, which is a beautiful soup object of our parsed HTML. So let's just print this out and see what we get. So we can just print out soup. So if I save that and run it, then let me make this a little bit bigger here. So we can see that this just prints out all of the HTML. And so it's very similar to what we just looked at. Now this HTML isn't formatted in a very readable way. It's all you know pushed over to the left. If we actually look at that simple .html file, we can see that it's uh, nice and indented. So in order to format this to where we can more clearly see uh, which tags are nested within each other, then we can just use the prettify method to clean this up a bit. So if we say soup dot prettify, and that is a method, so we have to put in parentheses there. If we save that and run it, now we can see that it indents these to where we can see uh, what tags are nested within each other. So here is that head tag that we saw before, and then everything that is indented within that head, head tag is uh, belongs to that head tag. Okay, so now let's see how to grab information from this HTML. So the easiest way to get information from a tag is to just access it like an attribute. So if we wanted to grab the title of our HTML page, and if I look here at our HTML, this sh should just be test a sample website is our title for this. So the easiest way to get that is to just access it like an attribute. So I will say match equals, and we will do soup dot title, and then we will just print out that match. So I'll save that and run it. Then we can see that it parsed out that title tag. Now it still has the title tags around the text. So if we only wanted to grab the text of the title tag, then we can access the text attribute of that tag. So we can just add that to the end here. So we'll say dot title dot text. So if I save that and run it, then you can see that now we only get the text of that title tag. Now searching for a tag like we did here by accessing it like an attribute by saying dot title, that will get the first title tag on the page. But the first tag on the page not all, might not always be what we want. So we can use the find method to do something similar, but it will also allow us to pass in some arguments that we can find the exact tag that we're looking for. So for example, if I use this dot access to find the first div on the page and I do soup dot div, if I save that and run it, then we can see that it got the first div tag on our page with all of its child tags, uh, which is everything for that first article. Um, but if we wanted to grab the div tag that has a class of footer, for example, then we'll have to use that find method and pass in some arguments. So let's use that find method. So we'll do soup.find, and now we will search for a div. Now, if I save that and run that right there, then we just get the uh, same thing. We just get the first div on the page. But with this find method, we can pass in arguments of attributes that narrow down exactly what tag we want to find. So for example, I can pass in an argument of class, and then after class we need an underscore, class underscore equals footer. Now these arguments can match any attributes that your tag might have, and most of the time you can just pass in arguments just like they are in the HTML. So if you wanted to match a div with an ID of footer, then you could just pass in an argument of ID equals footer. But the reason that we need an underscore after class is because class is a special keyword in Python. So they use class underscore instead. So if you were confused about that, then that's why they have that. So if we save that and run it, then we can see that now we're not getting the first div on the page. We're actually getting the div with the class of footer. Okay, so now let's say that we wanted to parse the HTML and get all of the article headlines and summaries from our page. Now, anytime that we want to get multiple things from a page, a good way to start is to just get one of whatever it is that you're trying to parse. So for example, if I wanted to get grab the headline and snippet from each article on our page over here, then let me start by first grabbing that information for one article. And once we have that working, then we can apply the same logic to all of our articles. So if we go back here to our browser and look at our page. Now in order to dig down into the HTML and find exactly where our article headline and summary is, within the Chrome browser, we can just right click on whatever it is that we want to parse and then click on inspect. 
Now I know this is a little small, let me make this just a little bit bigger here, and then we'll walk through a little bit of how to use this. So I'm using Chrome here, but pretty much every major browser anymore has something like this. And this is really useful for finding exactly what you want. So within the inspect here, if I just hover over our div class of article, then you can see that in the top part here, it's actually highlighting that entire everything that is within that div. And if I go down to the H2, then it only highlights that H2. And then if I hover over the href, then it highlights that link. And if I hover over the paragraph, it highlights that paragraph. So we can see exactly what is what. And the same with the second article. If I go down here and hover over this article, then I can see that that has the article two headline and summary text. And I can click on this little arrow here to expand this. And then it shows me everything that is within that div there. So we have the H2, the, eight, the uh, anchor tag, and then the paragraph tag with the summary text. So just like we saw before in the source code, our article headlines are within a div with a class of article and then an H2 and then an anchor tag. So let's go ahead and grab the article div. Um, so let me make this little smaller here so that we can see this. So let's grab that first div with the class of article. So I'm going to change this variable name here over to article and then print that out. Now this is going to be a div with the class of article. So if we save that and run it, then we can see that now we have that first article and we can search that matched tag just like we searched the entire HTML document. So we can access child tags with the dot access like an attribute or we can use the find method. So for example, if we wanted to dig down into the text of the headline, then we could say headline is equal to and now we don't want to use that entire soup, which is the entire HTML. We only want to search within this article. So now we'll say article dot H2 and within that H2, we want to access the anchor tag. So that is dot a, and now we want the text of that anchor tag. So we can just string all of that together. So with all that strung together, if I print out that headline and save that, and let me comment out, this entire article for now. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that it grabbed the text of that first article's headline. And we can do the same thing with the article summary. So it's just a paragraph within our article. So if we go down a couple of lines here, then we could say summary is equal to, and that is article dot P. So just to grab that paragraph dot text. So if we print out that summary, save that and run it, and we can see that now we have that article one headline text, and then we have the text summary of that article as well. Okay, so now we have the code here for grabbing a headline and a summary from a single article. So now that we have this information for one article, we can most likely use this, uh, reuse this information to parse the information from all of our articles. So right now we're using this find method to just get the first article, but now we need to loop through all of the articles. So to get all of the articles, we, instead of using find, we can just use the find all method. Now with find all, instead of just returning the first tag that matches these arguments, it will instead return a list of all the tags that match those arguments. So instead of just setting this variable, we can now loop over the list that that returns. So instead of saying article equals, we can just create a for loop. So we can say for article in soup.findall since this returns a list. So now we have a for loop there. I'm just going to get rid of that print article line. And then I'm going to put this logic here for grabbing the headline and summary from an article within that for loop. And now it'll loop through all the articles, which in this case is just the two of them. And we'll get the information for both of those. And also let me put in one more blank print statement here uh, within our loop so that at the end we have a blank line between our articles. So if I save that and run it, and now we can see that we have the article one headline and the summary for that article. We also have the article two headline and the summary for that article. Okay, so this is good. So we're starting to see how this would be useful for getting information from websites. So now let's do something similar, but with an actual website. So like we saw before, I have my personal website pulled up here in the browser and like we saw, if I scroll down, then we can see that we have a lot of video headlines and summaries and the embedded videos themselves. So let's say that we wanted to grab these titles and these summaries uh, and links to the videos. 
So first things first, let me just delete what we had so far with our simple uh, HTML file that we used. And I'm also going to get rid of where we are passing in that file. So first things first, we want to uh, get the source code from my website using the request library. And to do this, we can just say source equals request.get. And now we want to get my website, which is just um, HTTP coreyms.com. Now this request.get will return a response object. And to get the source code from that response object, we can just add on dot text to the end. So now this source variable should be equal to the HTML of my website. So now we can pass this into beautiful soup. So now let's see if that worked. So if we print out soup dot Printify, like we saw before, then this should print out the formatted code for my website. So it looked like that worked. If I scroll up here, we can see that this does look like HTML. It's kind of a mess because it's a larger website, um, but we can see that, uh, you know, these links seem to be coming from my website. So it looked like that worked. So now we can start parsing out the information that we want. Now, just like before, let's start off by grabbing one video's information, and then we'll loop through to get the information for all the videos. So to grab the first headline and snippet for the first post on my page, let's inspect my website and see if we can figure out what the structure is. So I'm gonna make this a little larger here. And now I'm gonna use that inspect functionality again within our browser to see if we can pinpoint exactly where this information is that we wanna parse. So if I hover over my headline and right click on that and go to inspect, then we can see that it is a link inside of an H2 here with a class of entry title. Now, if I go up a little more, we're trying to find something that encompasses all of our headline and our summary text and our video. Now, if I hover over this article here with all these different classes, if I scroll down, then we can see that that article uh, encompasses our headline and our summary text and our embedded video. Now, if I scroll down a little bit more, then we can see that it stops after that first post. So this is likely going to be our starting point since this contains all of the information within this first post. So if I scroll back up within this article, we have this H2 with entry title that has our header there. Now, if I expand this paragraph here, then go down a little bit. Okay, so that's just metadata for the entry. If I go over this entry content, that seems to have the summary text and the embedded video. So if I expand that, then this first paragraph here is our summary text. And the second paragraph here has the information for our embedded video. Okay, so this is a good starting point. So let's start off by first grabbing this entire first article uh, that contains all of this information. So now I'm going to close the inspector and take this down to size a little bit so that we can see that at the same time that we're working. Okay, so to grab that first article, let's just say article is equal to soup.find and then we will search for uh, article. So if I save that, and now let's also print out this article and put in a space there and run that. Now this is all kind of a mess here, so we can actually uh, prettify these tags as well. So if I do a prettify on this tag and save that and run it, now we can see that this tag is well structured as well. So now we can see that we got all the HTML for that first article. Uh, so we can see that we have uh, the link here that contains the title for that. So this is a video about Python regular expressions. Um, and then within, if we go down here a little bit more, then we have the text summary for that. And we also have the embedded YouTube video. So we have all the information for that first article where we can begin parsing out the headline and summary and video. So first let's grab the headline. So if we look in the HTML, we have our H2 and within that H2, we have a link and the text of that link contains the headline. So for now, let's just comment out uh, where we're printing out the HTML for that article. And now let's just say headline is equal to, and we wanna do uh, use the article HTML here and not the entire soup. So let's say article.h2 
dot a to grab that anchor tag and then text to grab the text out of that anchor tag. So now let's print out that headline. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that we did get the title of that latest post, which is that tutorial on regular expressions. Now, I think that this headline link here is actually the first link within our article. So I don't think we actually needed this H2 parent tag here. Uh, so if we just done article.a.txt, then I believe that we would have gotten the same result, but it doesn't hurt to be a little overly specific here. Um, but you just don't want to get carried away and put in every single parent tag because then that's going to stretch your line out far longer than it needs to be and just look more confusing than it needs to be. So it's okay to be a little overly specific, but just don't get carried away. Okay, so now that we've got the headline of this latest post, uh, now let's get the summary text for this post. So I'm going to comment out where we got the headline and uncomment out our prettified article HTML and reprint this back out so that we can look and see where this summary text is. So our summary text is within a paragraph tag, and that paragraph tag is within a div with a class of entry content. So to grab that, let's comment out our article.prettify again, and below our headline, let's just say summary is equal to article. And we're going to use that find method because we're going to be searching for a div with a specific class. So we want to find a div and to search for a specific class, we can just pass that in as an argument. So we can, can say class and that's going to be class underscore is equal to entry dash content. So all of this here is going to return the tag for this div here. So it's going to return all of this information. So within this div, we want to parse out the first paragraph. So we can just do dot P. And now within that paragraph, we want the text of that paragraph. So we can just string all this together. So dot P dot text. So now if we print that out and save that and run it, then we can see that we correctly parsed out the summary text for that post. Okay, so lastly, we need to get the link to the video for this post. Now this one is going to be a little more difficult, but I wanna show you this because sometimes parsing information can be a little ugly and require you to take several steps before getting to your final desired result. So on this website, these videos are embedded. So if we comment out our summary here and then uncomment out our article.prettify HTML, if we run this, and then find our video that is embedded. It should be in an iframe, which is right here. So the source attribute of this iframe is to the embedded version of the video. It's not the direct link to the video itself. But if you know how YouTube videos work, they all have a video ID. And the ID for this video is actually right here. I just highlighted it. Now the question mark in the URL, it specifies where the query parameters start. So it's not part of that video ID. So with that ID, we could actually create the link to the video ourselves. So we need to parse that ID from that URL. So first we need to grab the URL from the iframe. So just like before, let's comment out our article HTML, go down below our summary. And let's go ahead and just grab this. So we'll say video source is equal to article dot find because we want to find a an iframe with a specific class. We can see that this iframe has a class of YouTube player. So I'm just going to copy this. So we will find an iframe with a class and remember that underscore a class equal to YouTube player. So now let's just print out what we have so far. So I'm going to get rid of those spaces. So let's print out, and this should be the HTML for that iframe. So let's run this. We can see that we have the HTML for that iframe. Now, unlike what we've been doing before, we don't want to grab the text from this tag. What we really want is the value of that source attribute from the tag. Now, if you want to get that value from an attribute of a tag, then you can access it like a dictionary. So at the end here, after we grab that iframe, we can just ac access this like a dictionary and say that we want the source attribute of that tag. So now if I save that and run it, 
now we can see that we got the link to that embedded video. So now we're going to have to parse this URL string to grab the ID of that video. And we'll break this up into several lines. So first, we can see that the ID comes after a forward slash here. So let's split up this string based on forward slashes. So if I go down another line here, I can say vid ID is equal to our vid source dot split. And we want to split on a forward slash. And now let's, let me take this down a little bit here. And now let's print this out so you can see what this does. And let me actually comment out the vid source there, save that and rerun it. Now, if you've never used the split method on a string, then basically it just splits the string into a list of values based on the character that you specify. So we can see that now our URL is broken, to a, broken into a list of several parts based on where those forward slashes were. So if we look at the items in our list, then our video ID is right here because it was right after a forward slash. So that is an in index. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four. So this is in index four. So let's specify that we want the fourth index of that returned list. So at, after that split method, we can just say that we want index four there. So now if we run this, then we can see that we're getting closer. So we have the video ID here, and then we have these query parameters here at the end. So like I said before, the question mark specifies where the parameters for the URL begin, and the video ID is before that. So if we do another split on the question mark, then it should separate those out. So I'll go to a new line so that we're not making this one too long or too complicated, and we can just say vid ID is equal to vid ID, and now we want to split that based on the question mark. So now if we save that and run it, then now that got split up and our video ID is the first item of that list and the query parameters are the second item of that list. So to grab the video ID, we can just get the zero index of that returned list. So right after that, I'll just say that I want the zero index. So now if I save that and run it, then we can see that there we got the video ID. Now, I know that that was a lot of parsing, but sometimes website source code doesn't have the information that you want in the most accessible way. So I wanted to show you how you might go about getting the data that you want, even if it's a little bit messy. Okay, so now we can create our own YouTube link using this video ID. So the way YouTube uh, links are formatted are like this. So I'll comment out the video ID for now and scroll down here a little bit. We can just call this variable YouTube link and we will set this equal to, we'll just do a formatted string here. This will be HTTPS, then YouTube.com, then forward slash and the watch route. And then the query parameter here is gonna be a question mark with V, which stands for video, V equal to, and we wanna set that V equal to that video ID. So I will just put in a placeholder there with that video ID. So if we print out this YouTube link that we just created, if I save that and run it, then you can see that now we have this YouTube link. Now I used F strings to format that string, but those are only available in Python 3.6 and above. If you're using an older version of Python, then you can use the format method on that string to insert that placeholder. And I have a separate video on how to format strings if anyone needs to see how to do that. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description section below. But now that we've run this and got this link that we created, so now if I copy this and paste this into my browser over here, then we can see that that does go to that video. It goes directly to that video that we specified. Okay, so perfect. So we've scraped all the information that we wanted from that first article. So just like in our earlier example with the simple HTML, now that we've got the information for one article, now we can loop over all the articles and get that information for all of them. So to do that, we can just uncomment out the uh, code that we grabbed here for the summary. So I'll uncomment out that. I'll uncomment out the code for the headline and I can remove our comment into out print statements here just to clean things up a bit. Let me remove our prettify article print statement there. Okay, so just like we did before, instead of just finding the first article, now we want to find all of the articles. So now we can just use the find all method instead. And remember this returns 
a list of all of those articles. So instead of just setting that equal to one variable called article, we can do put in a for loop. So we can say for article in that list, then be sure we put in that colon there. And now we have to put all of this information within our for loop. So we will index or indent that over and save that. And just like I did in our earlier example, right here at the bottom, I'm also gonna put a blank print statement just so that it separates out the information from all of our articles. So now if I run this, then let me pull our output up here a little bit and scroll up to the top. So we can see that we got the headline for our first article and the text summary for our first article and the link to that YouTube video. And we did this for all the articles on the web page. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we can see that that works, getting all the information from the latest articles on the homepage of the website. Uh, now, we're almost finished up, but let me show you a couple more things. So sometimes you'll run into situations where you're missing some data, and if that happens, then it could break our scraper. Now, maybe you're pulling down a list of items and one is missing an image or something like that that you thought would be there. So to show what this looks like, I'm going to edit one of my posts here and remove the link to one of the YouTube videos. So instead of having you watch me log in to my webpage to do this, I'm just gonna fast forward this video a bit and skip to the point where I've edited this post. Okay, so I logged in and edited my page so that there is no longer a video link for the post a couple of numbers down here. So you can see that this post here does not have a video associated with the post. So now if I go back to our code that was just working before and I try to rerun this, then we can see that it gets the first post just fine. It gets the title and the summary text and the YouTube video link. But for the second post here, it gets the title and it gets the summary text, but when it gets to the YouTube link, it breaks our script and it says that none type object is not subscriptable and some weird errors there. Basically, it's breaking on this line here where it's trying to find that iframe with the YouTube player class. So if you run into something like this and you just wanna skip by any missing information, then what we can do is put that part of the code into a try accept block. So I'm gonna pull down our output a little bit here. Now here at the bottom, I'm just going to create a try accept block. And within Sublime Text, this has autocomplete. So I just click there for the try accept. And this gave me a little template here. So within the try, we want to take all of the code that gets that video information and we want to put that within our try block. So I will just paste all that in and indent it correctly there. Oh, and I meant to cut that out. So I need to delete all of that. And let's get this print here and cut that out. And we will put that below the try accept block. Okay, so the way that we have this set up right now this YouTube link variable will only get set if this succeeds here. Now in our exception, if this fails, then it's gonna to go to our exception block here. Now sometimes people will just put in pass if they just uh, want to skip over this. But in our case, we still want this YouTube link variable to be set. So instead of just passing here, let's set this YouTube link variable equal to none, just to say that we couldn't get that uh, YouTube link. Okay, so now with that code within a try accept block, let me make our output a little bit larger here. So now if we save that and run it, then we should get all of the information on our page. So our top post here still works fine. We got the title, we got the summary text, and we got the YouTube link. And for our second post, which has the missing video, we still have the title and we have the summary text. And then the video is just set to none, that variable set to none. And then it just continues on with the other post after that. So that's what we wanted. The video was missing, uh, but it didn't break our program. It still went and got the information for all the other posts on the page. Okay, so now we're done scraping the information. So now I'm just going to uh, up the uh, sublime text here so that we can see everything a little bit larger here and scroll up here to the top. So now that we've scraped the information that we want from our web page, now we can save this in any way that we'd like. So right now we're just printing this information out to the screen and maybe that's fine for your needs, but you can also, you know, save it to a file or say it, save it to a CSV or anything that you'd like.
So for example, real quick, let's say that we wanted to scrape this page and save that information to a CSV file. So we've already done the hard part of getting the information that we want from the web page. Now to save it to a CSV file, we could simply import the CSV module. So we'll import CSV. Then here at the top, right before our for loop, uh, we can open a CSV file. So we'll just create a variable here called CSV file. We'll set this equal to open, and we want to call this CMS scrape dot CSV. You can call that whatever you'd like. And we want to write to this file, so we'll pass in a W for that. Now this video isn't about working with files or CSVs. Uh, I do have a separate video going into detail about how to work with CSVs, but for this video, we'll just walk through really quickly. So I'm not gonna go into much detail here, but we could use a context manager here, uh, but the way that we currently have our script set up, I think it'll just be a little quicker to just set this variable and open the file like this. So now we can write some lines to set up our CSV file. And again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. I have a separate video on this if you're interested. Um, so we can say uh, CSV writer is equal to CSV dot write. So the write or writer method of that CSV module. And we want to pass in that CSV file that we just opened. And now we want to write the headers of this CSV file. So we can say CSV writer that we just created, and we can do a dot write row, and we can pass in a list of values that we wanna to write to this row. So we can create a list, and we just are passing in the headers for now. So our headers are gonna be headline and summary, and we need to pass that in as text, and also, video link. So those are the headers to our CSV file, which are basically the column names. That's the data that we're gonna be saving to this CSV. And now within our for loop, where we're getting that scraped information, we can just write that information to our CSV file. So at the very bottom of our loop, after we print that blank line, we can just write that data to our CSV with each iteration through our for loop. So we can say CSV writer dot right row, and we're gonna pass in a list here. And the values that we wanna pass in are gonna be our headline first, and then our summary second, and then our YouTube link third. And lastly, at the very end of our script outside of the for loop, since we didn't use a context manager to open that file before, we need to close our file here at the end of the script. So we can say CSV file, not CSV writer, this is the actual CSV file, we can say CSV file dot close. So now if I run this code, then you can see that it prints out all the information like it did before. But now if I open up my sidebar here, we can see that now we have this CMS, uh, dot csv file here in the side so i'm going to open this within finder which is just within the file system and now i'm going to open this with any kind of spreadsheet application now mine is numbers but yours might be excel so now we can see that we have all this data available within our spreadsheet so let me maximize this here and make this to where it's a little bit more readable so i'll make the columns a little bit smaller there and then wrap the text in all of our cells. So we can see that we have all of this information. So here are our headers here, headline, summary, and video link. Here are all of our headlines uh, parsed out for us and our summaries. And then you can see here in the video links with that uh, second post where the video was missing, uh, this got posted in as blank there. So there's a none value there. Okay, so now I can exit out of that and pull back up our script here. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for this video. Uh, hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how you can go out and scrape information from websites. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is if you want data from a large website like Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or something like that, then it may be beneficial for you to see whether or not they have a public API. Uh, public APIs allow those sites to serve up data to you in a more efficient way. And sometimes they don't appreciate if you try to you know, scrape their data manually. They'd rather you go through the public API. But it's usually those larger websites that have those public APIs. So if you want data from a, you know, a small or medium-sized website, then likely you'll have to go through and do something like we did here.
Now, also, I should point out that you should be considerate when scraping websites. So computer programs allow us to send a lot of requests very quickly. So be aware that you might be bogging down someone's server if you aren't careful. Uh, so try to keep that in mind. So, you know, after this tutorial, try not to go out and, you know, hammer my website with, you know, tons of requests through your program. And that goes for other websites too. Uh, some websites will even, you know, monitor if they're getting hit quickly and they may even block your program if you're hitting them too fast. But other than that, if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. Also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.